Hello people, in the exam if they ask you in pediatrics urinary tract infection if they ask you that is UTI, you should understand that it is a very common medical problem okay and it is common in both boys and girls and uh, the root of infection is hematogenous which is very weird right because it is coming within it is coming from the blood okay and for boys what happens there is a higher incidence of urinary tract infection okay so that is why in infancy you should be very careful because they can have urinary tract anomalies that cause the urinary tract infection so what they are saying is in boys the urinary uh, tract anomalies are more which can cause more in boys in childhood right so girls and boys will have equal boys boys and girls will have equal in childhood but later on it was girls who will have more okay so boys if you rule out this anomalies part right then you can say girls will have more so which are the organisms standard like adults itself e coli then klebsiella staphylococcus saprophyticus all this you can say okay it can be candida in immunocompromised okay if they have had too much of antibiotics then the fungus will take over so how will this child present with uh, present you fever vomiting diarrhea jaundice poor weight gain lethargy see in pediatrics everywhere you will write poor poor weight gain failure to thrive failure to thrive if you write you will get marks okay in pediatrics write everywhere okay then um, uh, there can be hematuria that is blood and urine right especially when the baby passes urine it will cry you can understand right it is having pain painful micturition so this is very important presence of crying during voiding okay very important so that can suggest a urinary obstruction if there is some trip, dribbling of urine then it can, there can be urinary obstruction because this is the stage where you want to rule out anomalies congenital abnormalities you want to rule out that is the whole point see as an adult no you know you have been peeing very well all these years and you're a very happy adult because you know your urinary uh, uh, tract everything is the, fine there are no anomalies only one or two days you get uti you you know you're fine but when it comes to a baby a UTI can be indicating to you that there is some obstruction, some uretrovesical reflux, right? There can be some, some kind of an anomaly here. So this UTI is going to give you a clue to that. The word I was trying to say is vesicouretric reflux. That is, if this is the urinary bladder and from the both the kidneys, what are you getting? Ureter, right? You are getting ureter from both these kidneys. So there could be a vesico-uretric reflux. <clears throat> so from bladder to ureter, vesico-uretric reflux can be there, right? So this and all you have to find out or there could be an obstruction to the pass of the urine. So all this you'll have to find out as a pediatrician. Uh, it may not just be a lower urinary tract infection, even the kidney may be affected. Pylonephritis might be there, right? Pus in the kidney. So it could be as uh, higher up as that. How will you diagnose UTI? Obviously, you will take urine sample, isn't it? And you will count the colony count of the bacteria, bacteria, bacteria. And if there is significant bacteria, that is if there is more than 1 lakh per ml, right? Colony count of greater than 1 lakh per ml is significant bacteria. So then you will do a culture, right? You will do what? You will culture this bacteria and see what they are susceptible to. So then you will know which antibiotic to give. So how will you treat? Antibiotics, as simple as that, isn't it? So just look at the names that you'll have to write. Ceftriaxone, Cefotaxime, Amikacin, Gentamicin. These are all parenteral. That is, uh, you will not give orally. Orally, you can give Cefixime, Ciprofloxacin, Ofloxacin. What is this? Coamoxiclab. Oh, Coamoxiclab. Amoxi, amoxicillin with clavulinic acid. Okay, okay. Amoxicillin, as simple as that. Okay. So, what and all will you give? Um, <clears throat> um, drugs you will give. Tell. We'll give uh, parenteral. We'll give um, uh, ceph something ceph cephalosporin third generation, I remember. Okay. Tell the drugs. Gentamicin, did you see? Yeah, gentamicin, amikacin. Ceftriaxone, the tree you remember. Okay. Ceftriaxone, cefotoxime. Cefotoxime. Ceftriaxone, cefotoxime. We'll write it now. Okay. No forgetting. What are the parenteral drugs? Ceftriaxone, cefotoxime. Uh, gentamicin, amikacin, this much is enough, right? <clears throat> now, coming to oral, cefixime and amoxiclav. See, amoxicillin is standard drug that you write for everything, right? Amoxiclav, cefixime, 
Cefixime is also a cephalosporin only. Ciprofloxacin, don't forget. Oh, floxacin, if you want, you can remember. See, one thing is, we told you, you have to do urine check, etc. Antibiotic, you'll find out susceptibility. Okay, okay. But you know what? In pediatrics, it is not just this much, okay? You have to go beyond that and find out if there is an anomaly in the child, okay? So, for that, you'll have to do imaging. Normally, in UTI adults, you'll just do urine culture, sensitivity, and you'll give antibiotic. But in an infant, you have to do imaging, okay? So this is very important. So you'll have to check whether there is obstruction or vesicouretric reflux or if there is some pyelonephritis or if there is going to be pyelonephritis because of these things. So all this you have to be careful about. So you'll do an ultrasound. You can also do a micturating cystourethrogram. See here nicely they have given ultrasound micturating cystourethrogram. As he is voiding you can take the x-ray kind of a thing. Then um, DMSA renal scan, dimercaptosuccinic acid renal scan, okay. You have to do a kidney scan, remember, okay. Especially after the first episode, go and get checked for the baby. You don't want any congenital anom uh, anomalies, right. Then 1 to 5 years means same thing, ultrasound DMSA scan and micturating urethro, uh, cystourethrogram, MCU. MCU is what? Micturating cystourethrogram. If ultrasound and the ABS, AMSA is abnormal, then you can add one micturating. Okay. Otherwise, it looks like ultrasound uh, DMSA is enough for one to five years. Above five years, what you will do? Ultrasound. And then you can talk about the other things. Okay. Ultrasound, 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 right? Ultrasound, ultrasound, ultrasound. Okay. There is just one more point they are telling here. You know, once you are doing this, see, first episode of UTI, you controlled everything. Uh, now UTI baby is fine. But what they are doing now, they are doing imaging and saying, okay, let's check if there is any other anomaly which is actually cause, which actually causes infection. Okay. So what you will do, uh, you will order this imaging. Now till the imaging comes, you know, they want to put the baby on some prophylaxis of antibiotics so that they don't want the next episode of UTI. So what are they doing? They are talking about some. Cotrimoxazole, that is uh, trimethoprim, right? So that one they are giving nitrofurantoin, they are talking about cephalexin. So basically this is the drug of choice uh, in 3 to 6 months of life. So basically if the baby has the first episode of UTI and they are doing imaging, they want to give this prophylaxis so that uh, they can stop the UTI from coming again. So basically this is cotrimoxazole and um, nitrofurantoin etc. This cotrimoxazole is sulfur methoxazole plus trimethoprim. Cotrimoxazole is what? Sulfur methoxazole plus trimethoprim. 800, uh, 400 mg to 80 mg. Okay. So this cotrimoxazole you can use as prophylaxis for uh, um, UTI in children, right? So basically this is uh, effect, uh, it works against so many bacteria. But what are we concerned about? It is, um, work, it should work against E. coli. That's what we want, right? It should work against E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter and um, what else? Basically, it needs for us, for us, it needs to work against these, right? So, it seems to be working against those. So, prophylaxis means prevention, right? So, for prevention, you are uh, giving all this uh, cotrimoxazole, uh, nitrofurantoin, etc. These are the drugs. But do you know how to prevent a UTI? Prevention of UTI is just hygiene, guys. Hygiene. Hygiene, hygiene, because the where is the E. coli and all coming from? For adults at least, uh, it is not hematogenous, right? E. coli, etc. comes from your fecal matter, from your poop. So always keep your uh, uh, underwear clean. Don't wipe from back to front because you will bring the poop to your um, uh, urethral opening. We have a complete video on this urinary tract infection, especially for adults. So if you want to prevent what you should do, you should, uh, if you are having a UTI, antibiotic course, you should complete. Otherwise, the bacteria will develop resistance and come back and attack you with more vengeance. You should clean your anus separately, right? Anus, that is where your poop comes out. There you should clean neatly because that is where everything is coming from, the E. coli, etc. At least for adults, you should clean underwear. Don't, in that place, don't put powder or don't use overuse soaps, etc. Don't shave there. Don't use any calamine or something there, okay? So, all that you should do, okay? What you can do? You can keep clean diaper, right? Especially when the baby has pooped, you should remove the diaper. If it has peed, it is okay. But if, you're, if the baby has pooped, you should remove the diaper because the, that is where the bacteria is coming from. From where is the bacteria coming? At least for adults, etc. It is coming from the fecal matter. 
remember to drink lot of water and then if finally if in the baby you have found any abnormality okay if you have found any vesico ureteric reflux or if there is some urine obstruction then what you have to you'll have to fix these don't forget okay so finally you you found that anomaly which was causing the uti fix the anomaly uh this may require surgery okay so at least the recurrent uti you can stop and you can save the kidneys